Okay, we're going to continue looking at something called confidence intervals. Uh, in the last lesson, what we looked at was the introduction to the section. And what we, we saw was that generally we can take surveys to make predictions about true populations, and that's often done. Um, but we're t we will make some errors, so there will be a margin of error uh, when we take random samples of populations. Uh, so we'll have a confidence interval between which we are confident, and we'll also have a confidence level as far as how confident we are in the results. We did look at some examples. We also noticed that there's a relationship between sample size, confidence level, and margin of error. The more people we sample, the more confident we are, and the less likely we are to have errors in our um, findings, and vice versa. The less people that we sample, so lower sample size means our confidence level goes down, and our margin of error, or we're more likely to be further away from the mean for the true population because we haven't sampled as many people. So we looked at an example having to do with social networking as well as some sort of poll. We're going to look at two more examples in this lesson. Uh, we're going to look at one having to do with baseball. I will read this to you. It says, to meet regulation standards, baseballs must have a mass from 142 grams to 149 grams. A manufacturing company has set its production equipment to create baseballs that have a mean mass or an average mass of 145 grams. So they've set up their equipment to have an average mass. Their average baseball is going to have 145 grams. Okay. Uh, to ensure that the production equipment continues to operate as expected, the quality control engineer takes a random sample of baseballs each day and measures their mass to determine the mean mass. If the mean mass of the random samples is between 144.7, so essentially if it's between 144.7 and 145.3, which I'm writing here, some people are just helped by seeing the visual of the number line, then the production equipment is running correctly. If the mean mass of the sample is outside the acceptable level, so if, if its average is outside of 144.7 to 143.5, the production equipment is shut down and adjusted. The quality control engineer refers to the chart shown on the next page when conducting random sampling. And here's the chart. We'll look at that chart having to do uh, with part C. Part A says this, what confidence interval is the engineer using for the test? Well, the confidence interval is between these two numbers. Okay, so it's between 144.7 and 145.3 grams. Okay, that's the confidence interval. It's the interval between which is confident. <clears throat> Part B says, what margin of error is the engineer using for this test? So we basically have to know how far is each of these values from the mean. So what are these distances? And these distances, you can do it mathematically or otherwise. This will be plus 0.3 grams, and this will be minus 0.3 grams. Or another way to do that is find the difference or the range of your confidence interval. So 145.3 minus 144.7, and that's 0 0.6. And then divide it by 2, and you'll get 0 0.3. So as far as your margin of error, it would be plus or minus 0.3 grams from the mean. So the margin of error is plus or minus 0 0.3 grams from the mean. And the last question has to do with this table here uh, that I've circled in green. <clears throat> it says, how does the sample size, and I should have the word effect there, the confidence level in the results? And this should be pretty clear to you. If we have a bigger sample size, the confidence level is higher, and vice versa. The lowest sample size has the lowest confidence level. So you're more confident if you use more samples. <clears throat> more confidence that, that what you're measuring is close to the mean. So how does sample size affect confidence level? We've looked at this in the previous lesson. We'll look at it again. If sample size goes up, I should draw that arrow up like this, then your confidence level goes up. Okay. Let's look at the last example. We're going to look at a survey or a poll having to do with voters. And this is often, um, confidence intervals are often used in polls. So a poll was conducted to ask voters the following question. If an election were held today, whom would you vote for? The results indicated that 53% would vote for Smith, and 47, and I'll use these colors, 47% of people would vote for Jones. The results were stated as being accurate within 3.8% points, 19 times out of 20. So I'm going to use the visual here, and that's going to help answer all the questions. So Smith, we know that his mean is 53%. <clears throat> this is Smith. And it's plus or minus 3.8 percentage points. That is the margin of error. So if I add 3.8 percentage points, 
I'd end up at 56.8. And if I subtract, so that's plus 3.8 percentage point. If I subtract 3.8 percentage points, I'd be at 49.2. So if I can answer the first question, so state the confidence interval for Smith. The confidence interval is between 49.2 to 56.8%, or you could state it as the mean, which is 53, plus or minus 3.8%. Either one of those is equally accurate. Uh, for Jones, his mean is 47%, and their margin of error is 3.8%. So if I add 3.8%, I'll get 50.8, so he's going to get between 50.8 and 43.2%. So that's between 43.2 and 50.8%, or in other words, the mean 47 plus or minus the margin of error, 3.8%. So that's uh, an answer to that. By what percent of the votes do the confidence intervals overlap? Well, you can see here that the confidence intervals overlap only in this part, and that's between, <clears throat> I can answer that right here, uh, between 49.2 and 50.8%. That's where they overlap. So here's my last question. Is it possible that Smith could receive more than 56.8% of the votes? So Smith, it says that the upper part of his uh, range here, or his confidence interval, is 56.8. So is it likely he's going to get more than that? Well, the answer is no. And it says, justify your answer. Well, we can see here that we're confident of these results 19 times out of 20. So our confidence level is high, or in other words, it is 95%. We're 95% sure that he will not receive above 56.8% of the votes.